Hello everybody. Uh, I'm making uh, two record updates and I decided to do one on CDs and one on vinyls uh, because I've bought so many records. So let's start with the CDs. DAD, Psychopathical, uh, the double live album. Uh, although I've been a fan of DAD for many years, I'm still missing some of their albums. Uh, so here's one off from the list. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, live album, although I'm surprised why it is a double album, because all of this material could be have fitted onto one album. And first story of the day. Uh, El Supernaut plays Half Dead. When I went to uh, buy this, I found this and I looked at the title. Okay, plays Half Dead. I didn't think anything about it. Then I took a look at the uh, song credits here and it says bonus tracks. And I was like, bonus tracks? This is the only format that this album has been released and this is the only pressing of it, so why bonus tracks? And I read more of these titles and I realized that there's quite a few Dead Kennedys covers here. So when I leave these bonus tracks off, half of these songs are Dead Kennedy songs. So plays half dead. Clever or what? And next one has a, a bit of a conflict feeling for me. Emilio Harris and Rodney Crowell, Old Yellow Moon. An excellent, uh, I would say, uh, late 70s, early 80s country. They're like the stuff they, very much like the stuff that they did together during the time when they played in the same band. Uh, so yeah, the quality of this is excellent. But the thing is that they came to Finland during this time, and I could have, could have gone see them, uh, but I had to choose between going to see them and going traveling. And also there was on the same week as this one, there was uh, Lucinda Williams and Bon Jovi. But I decided to go traveling and I had to miss these concerts. So whenever I look at this album, it reminds me of that one. But musically, very, very good one. And they are just about to all just have, I don't remember exactly, but uh, any day now they are releasing a second duet album. Niklo, At My Age. Again, excellent stuff, very different to what he did during his 70s and 80s. Uh, he has mellowed down a lot, but I really like this stuff. Uh, this is uh, the fourth of his album uh, in this style. He has uh, released uh, two albums after this, but I'm not familiar what kind of music he has done with those, but this is excellent stuff. Mellow stuff. And to the other, other end, accept Stalingrad. Uh, I saw them on this tour, so uh, and I heard from the radio the title track, so I was uh, a bit familiar with this one, but it, it was big surprise. I mean, this was excellent, excellent, really, really strong, really, really strong heavy metal album uh, and really uh, good melodies here brilliant brilliant album and uh, again another one that I was well 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 aware of I mean I had heard this album uh, like this and I heard saw them live many times during this tour Michael Monroe sensory overdrive uh, and again I have to say that I was surprised how good I thought this was since uh, since I was already so familiar with it, uh, I, I, I would have expected it just to like, you know, like, okay, I know that, so that's what it is, but it still was even better than what I expected. Michael Monroe, Sensory Overdrive. And uh, when I was going home from the record store, I was passing another record store, and it was a beautiful day, so they had these boxes outside where they were selling secondhand CDs. And since they were cheap, I decided to have a look and ended up buying several records. And those records were such that I had to simply thought that I would uh, like to hear them, but I didn't have much faith in them. And first one was Hurricanes Tugube, Finnish Legends. And uh, this was the only album of theirs that I didn't remember if I had ever heard this one. Uh, uh, this was actually a better one than than what I expected. Uh, 
not a great one, not among their best, uh, but certainly not among their worst ones. I would say that this uh, was uh, this was released during the middle of their career, and this is uh, middle of their uh, catalog also. Uh, okay, next one was okay. When I went back and forth with this one, Jim Pembroke party upstairs. Uh, earlier this year, I had bought. Uh, uh, his uh, first solo album, Wicked Ivory, uh, which I didn't like. It was just too weird. Uh, but uh, I had uh, I had a feeling that this one could be a lot more like uh, sensible stuff. Uh, Wicked Ivory was just too weird. Uh, so I bought this and I felt good. That, okay, one more and the Jim Pembroke solo album and this one is going to be a good one. Then I read the sleeve notes and it said that this was done within bad feelings uh, with a slight depression sort of because uh, this was done in the aftermath of John Lennon's murder and his friend uh, Ron Österberg's suicide which actually happened on the same day so I was that okay this that, that sounds bad and then it was also mentioned that because his friend Ronnie Osterberry was a drummer, this one doesn't include drums. I thought, oh, that sounds bad. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, this turned out to be a good one. Uh, a good one, not a great one, but a good one. And also there are bonus tracks here, which I, I felt that they were good uh, additions to this album. And next one, uh, it's been on my mind for I don't know, 15 years maybe, and that's Madame George, What's Happening? And the problem with me, uh, with this album to me, is that it's a Finnish funk band from the 70s. And uh, Finnish funk band from the 70s doesn't sound too convincing to me. Uh, well, it turned out to be better what I expected. Uh, but it's not uh, funk all the way through this, for example, a Bad Company cover. Uh, it was better what I expected, but again, this is a good album, not a great one. And then Rush, Signals. Uh, I wanted to expand beyond uh, moving pictures, but I really didn't know where to go. Uh, so I chose this one simply because of the album cover. I like this album cover. And uh, there's a more uh, more prominent uh, the synthesizers are more uh, more to the fore here than on the previous albums. Uh, I think it even start the whole album starts with the synth riff, uh, but it, it, they are not, they are not here on uh, any dominant role yet. So. Yeah, I turned. Uh, I like this. I, I like this. The songs were really, really good, uh, and I'm waiting for this one to be reissued on vinyl. I'm probably going to buy this on vinyl, uh, although Rush is one of those bands that I collect mostly on CD. And again, Remu, Andalusian muistelot. Uh, this was released a couple of years ago, and I heard that this was supposedly a tango album. So I was a bit, uh, uh, well. I was like, well, let's see what it's going to be like, but I, I didn't expect too much. Uh, in the end, this turned out to be a good album, a good follow-up album to his two mid to late uh, 80s solo albums. Uh, well, I would say that uh, there is some tango, but not too much. Uh, so, um, but yeah, the song quality, I would say that this uh, again is a good album, but not a great album. Uh, I would say that it's, it's a good follow-up to those two albums, uh, but it doesn't match the quality of those two. Uh, the odd thing here is the sound of the voice. Uh, it sounds like it's put through some filters or whatever. It sounds a bit odd. And again, Isokuna Lindholm and Orpheus Lillan, his first, sol uh, first live album from late 74. Uh, which turned out to be the last full gig that the band ever played. Um, and here, here's the good thing about bonus tracks, because on the original vinyl album, uh, this would have been a bad disappointment, because the, what made up the original B-side of this album is really a bad. Uh, it's like a, 
it's kind of one of the songs is simply a joke and one of them is basically a drum solo and one of them is a blues jam which is very generic blues jam uh, there was there's nothing really interesting about the track it's just the uh, blues cliches played through yeah. so on vinyl this would have been a bad disappointment but the bonus tracks here saves a lot yeah um then Rolling Stones Rarities 1971 2003 uh, when this was released uh, I took a look at this uh, track list and I, I was kind of like not enough interesting there to me buy but late last year I started thinking that I have to have to take a look another look at this one and I found out the track listing and uh, I decided that well there is enough interesting stuff here for me to buy it so uh, I started looking for it and it was uh, surprisingly difficult to find. I mean, in eBay people were asking like 50 pounds for this one. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, um, but since this is mostly a, a B-side collection, it shows what, the, what is the strength and bad side of the B-sides. Some of the songs are really good, some of the songs are really a throwaway stuff like the... Uh, uh, Harlem Shuffle New York mix. I, I don't like that one. But mostly this is good stuff. I'm such a big uh, Rolling Stones fan that I'm really really pleased that I finally got this one in on my collection. And then the last artist this time. Marko Haavisto ja Pouta Haukat Outolinto. This is the latest album released from this year. Uh, Marko Haavisto is uh, sadly a very little known artist and not really a popular in any sense here. Uh, so uh, whenever I have a chance I travel them around here in the most southern part of Finland but still if I manage to see them once a year that's a good uh, good result. Last year I didn't see them at all. Uh, this time I've seen them now well twice plus one more. Uh, yeah the, uh, I bought this from the album release geek and then, uh, same as uh, this CD, I, among those CDs I found one of their earlier albums, Täydellinen Maailma. Very happy to find this one. And then one more proof of how unpopular they are. Uh, I traveled to one of their gigs and I bought this album there, uh, Majakan Vartija. This album was released five years ago and this was limited to 500 and it's still available just to, goes to show how unpopular they really are um, um, hold on. One more. yeah most of the times that I have seen them I, they play very small clubs uh, and yet they are even then they are mostly empty like, a, like this gig there was probably 20 people there but this one had more people. There's a duet album between uh, with uh, Karle Viikate and Marko Haavisto. These are Karle Viikate songs molded to suit more Marko Haavisto's style. Uh, very, very good gig, very good album. And finally, his solo album from two years back, Loyal Rengiksi. Uh, I started looking for this uh, late last year and I did find this from a couple of stores but always on full price and when I saw this in one of the department stores here which I know that they always lower their prices after some time uh, I was uh, waiting for them to drop the price on this one and I visited the store time and time and time and again and it was always full price then uh, about a month ago they started a big sale they were advertising how they are going to say uh, uh, sale, uh, put on sale hundreds of CDs and I went there, there were maybe four CDs and this was on full price and I became really upset, I, I thought that I'm going to pay full price for this but I won't pay, from, pay it for that price, uh, I, I won't buy, buy it from that store, I pay any full price to any other store uh, but luckily as time went on they finally did put this on sale and I bought two copies just because it was so cheap. <laughs>
Okay, uh, that's it for now. Uh, vinyl edition coming up. Bye.